It's a daily ritual, something most of us take for granted. But how our effluent is processed and where it ends up is really given a second thought. I think it's hard sometimes when you talk about wastewater treatment. Um, they're probably structures that people don't see because they're hidden away. And these hidden structures are our nation's treasure. Kilometres of pipes, the lifeblood of our community. Out of sight, but by far the most capital intensive of all services provided by local authorities, such as Mackay Regional Council. The Mackay Water Recycling Project is one such initiative that provides a creative solution to the ever-changing environmental needs of one of Australia's fastest growing regional centres. To get the city growing this fast, you need to have a treatment plant in the right place as a strategic location. When you start putting infrastructure like this in the ground, you're catching for the economic growth of the city. And you're talking for the next 20 odd years. It is hard for people to understand what are you going to get out of it? What are we going to achieve from actually building this plant, doing something different in our community? And it is a hard sell. Former Mackay City Mayor Julie Boyd was a passionate believer in the project. Many didn't share her vision though. I have to say that I flew down to Canberra, met with the, the director of the uh, National Water Commission and I literally threw myself on my knees and said, please, we need this money, we really need to get this project going. And he said he couldn't believe how passionate I was about sewerage. With a price tag of $154 million, Mackay Regional Council, the Australian Government and Queensland Government jointly funded the Mackay Water Recycling Project. It reuses on average about 90% of Mackay's waste water, providing liquid gold for a productive sugarcane industry and protecting one of Australia's greatest assets, the Great Barrier Reef. It removes 250 tonnes of nutrients every year, rehabilitates groundwater resources, and the most tangible benefit of all, the closure of the 45-year-old Mount Bassett wastewater treatment plant ending the need for an ocean sewage outfall. The average person, there's no stench coming from that area now and I know those that drive into work every day are more than happy. This whole thing ties together to create a very large scheme that is quite unique and is going to, to agriculture literally uh, 100%. But with change comes apprehension. Some urban landowners weren't convinced of the project's merits particularly using recycled water on sugar crops. Because we were saying to people, we think that this is a resource that could be used, there was all the fear about, oh, if we use this for irrigation, are the kids going to come out with two heads? Will they all get hepatitis? To me, it was a no-brainer. It was environmentally sound, it was great for the cane farmers, it was good uh, socially, economically, you name it, it had all the right things going for it. And yet trying to sell it to people was extremely tough. And people worried about their own, own drinking water supplies out of the aquifer and things like that, but you know, in, in the long term they had a far greater threat from saltwater intrusion into their drinking water supplies than, than anything else. It's been a lengthy process, so Council had to go through extensive planning for about six or seven years. They had to secure the funding from the state and federal government, so um, for the benefits of what the community is going to get, the environment is going to get, it's a, it's a lead, leading project in Australia. And we must pay tribute to, to our previous councils that they had the foresight to firstly uh, apply for funding and then plan this, plan this project right through. So I, I think not only uh, this council and, and this current council, but their previous council, will, I'm sure they'll have a, a notch to, to put in the belt and say, well, look, I was part of that. The project included the construction of 27 individual storage dams by local contractor Ogilvy Constructions and a 2,200 megalitre dam to hold the Class A recycled water. It was liquid gold to farmers like Ross Williams. A guaranteed of water um, because we just don't know what's going to happen with our underground supply in the next five years. We've lost uh, three boars out of six to saltwater intrusion. Ross Williams and Steve Young are just two cane growers who've watched helplessly as water allocations have been slashed to their properties. Saltwater intrusion creating additional uncertainty as the aquifer becomes unusable. Now as they access Class A recycled water, their future is much brighter. It'll service a big centre pivot which will irrigate 250 acres and it'll just it'll service it only and we can run the water to the rest of the farm as well. I was going to have to do something and this sort of opened a door to to make it more simple even though of course it isn't free but um, yeah like uh, no matter how you go about things it costs a lot of money and 
and you've got to weigh up whether it's viable. And this, this is viable. Likened to a complex jigsaw puzzle, the multifaceted project awarded to the Tenex Alliance John Holland Joint Venture covered seven different work sites at the height of construction. What the fellas call boundary riding, if you like, but where they're actually out there just going around making sure that each crew knows what it is that's happening for the day. So there's the communication side. Uh, the supervision side and safety um, and we're very proud of our record here on safety and, that, and that's come from that, uh, that constant looping of supervision. On this project in particular you've got a dam being built, you've got a big uh, two pipelines so you're really getting exposure to everything, refurbishing existing work. Part of that existing work was doubling the size of the Bucasia wastewater treatment plant in the city's northern suburbs. The area is home to a growing population base. The Keisha STP, as you can see, as you look around, it's a, it's a very tight and uh, compact site, uh, so it's, it's got its aspects of uh, very challenging for us, so uh, the guys in a, on a day-to-day -day basis need to make sure that uh, we're, we're keeping up with our uh, program. Across town and the transformation of the Baker's Creek site was staggering. It was a hive of construction activity, work consuming every square metre of the site. 3,000 cubic metres of concrete was needed to construct four SBR holding tanks. A concrete masterpiece measuring 160 metres long, 45 metres wide with 5 metre high walls. When you've been here for two years and you, can, you know every inch of pipe that you've put in and, and every uh, square metre of concrete, it is, it is a, a lot of effort uh, from a, a large team to uh, put those things into the ground and get them running and at the end of the day when it's up and running it looks easy.